hello YouTube. Um, so I did my video on Steve Shives and Man of Steel, and someday I'll get around to doing a, a proper review of Man of Steel, because I think that there were things about the movie that I liked, and there were things about the movie that I didn't like. Um, uh, I didn't want to give the unilateral opinion that, that uh, you know, I loved this movie. Uh, I just thought that there were things in Steve Shives' review that I didn't understand, I'll put it that way, as a fan of Superman and as a fan of the character. Um, but, what I want to do in this video is talk about a sequel. Um, because I think there's a lot of stuff in this film that sets up precedent and lays, lays the groundwork for Man of Steel 2. I think there's a lot of stuff that, that people maybe miss, and, and I wanted to, to throw my idea out for what the Man of Steel sequel might be. Um, there's Man of Steel spoilers in this video, by the way. Um, so, okay. The end of Man of Steel, you have Metropolis, like, flattened <laughs> by, uh, by the giant terraforming world engine, right? Strikes me is the, the first movie was about Superman coming out to the world. The next movie just has to logically be uh, the world reacting to Superman. And the only way that you can go forward if you're going to do that is to have Lex, right? You have to have Lex Luthor. Um, <clears throat> and I think they laid the groundwork for Lex Luthor really well. Um, so you had... So Superman destroys the Phantom Zone projector that was hovering over Metropolis. Um, or actually, uh, the Air Force does it with Lois Lane in the movie. Um, but the world engine is still on the other side of the world, collapsed in the Indio Indian Ocean, right? Um, so it strikes me as, like, okay, you have this gigantic machine um, that is powered somehow. And it makes sense to me to say that that giant machine is powered by some kind of reactor of sorts, right? A reactor that runs on radioactive Kryptonian materials. Um, at that point, you have your source of kryptonite. Um, you don't need to go through this whole, well, you know, some kryptonite landed on Earth when Krypton exploded somehow, right? Like, that seems to me to be unnecessary at this point, because you just had a giant Kryptonian machine uh, collapse on Earth. Um, so that's good. I think that that's uh, an, interesting th an interesting thing for them to do. Um, I think... Um, so I think if the sequel is the world reacting to Superman, then I think that Lex Luthor's point of view publicly has to be, um, I am coming in, I am a billionaire, I'm going to help rebuild Metropolis. Um, and I think that we should be suspicious of this alien who came in and flattened our city. Um, what do we really know about this alien? Can we trust this alien? Blah, 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 blah. And so he garners public appeal on the basis of his philanthropic rebuilding of Metropolis and on the basis of his xenophobic um, uh, attitude towards Superman. Meanwhile, um, sort of more in private, it seems to me to be reasonable to suggest that LexCorp and um, the government, right, and I imagine here General Sam Lane uh, being introduced, as well as Star Labs, who they briefly mention in uh, Man of Steel, um, which are all sort of staples of the DC universe. Um, I can imagine them collaborating together sort of in, as secretly as possible, um, working on this Kryptonian technology and trying to figure out a way, if need be, to kill Superman. Right, a way to keep him under control. Like, what if Superman turns bad? You know, we're all fucked. We don't have the weaponry to deal with him. How do we take him down? So they've found the technology for a Kryptonian, re for a Kryptonite reactor, excuse me, 
um, on the world engine. Um, I could also imagine them finding a command key, and this is, I think, an interesting point of setup. And if I'm right, if this is the way that they're going, um, then it explains what Russell Crowe was doing in the movie um, so much, which is that if they find a Kryptonian command key, then that gives us that gives them the access to, uh, or that gives them access to the technology surrounding the idea of taking a human being's memories and consciousness and uploading them into a computer and such. Some Superman fans know, might know where I'm going, but um, I think that it, it just has to result in Superman, or in Luthor and his team of, of various organizations developing Metallo. Um, uh, to unleash upon Superman, should he ever go rogue. Um, meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, you have Lex Luthor, who's, you know, the billionaire, xenophobic, etc. Meanwhile, Lex also harbors, particularly in the comics this is true, he harbors just a resentment for the fact that Superman exists. Lex's whole point of view is, I am the best that mankind has to offer. I worked my way up from nothing. I am the, you know, alpha human. Um, I, you know, peak physical condition. I am a brilliant mind and I'm a billionaire. Uh, and you know what? Like, you, Superman, just got your powers by landing here. What is that? Like, screw you, I'm going to take you down, right? So there's a, a, a feeling of, of envy that Lex Luthor has that drives him um, towards Superman. And I feel like the other side of that coin, the exact other side of that coin, has to be Batman, right? So I'm imagining Batman, if, you know, we have the Wayne Enterprises logo in Man of Steel, um... I feel like in, if Batman exists, if Bruce Wayne exists, it, you know, it almost doesn't make sense that he doesn't want a closer look at this alien that just flattened Metropolis, and that he doesn't want some kind of contingency plan for dealing with this alien um, should he ever become a problem. Um, you know, Batman, of course, wants a way to neutralize Superman if push comes to shove. So I imagine Bruce Wayne coming into uh, Metropolis to help rebuild through perhaps a joint venture with LexCorp or something like that, um, just to sort of scope the whole thing out. Meanwhile, I'd imagine Batman um, working, like going to Lex Luthor in the sh under the shadow of night, you know, um, to help him develop Metallo, to, to, figure, to figure that whole thing out, right? Um, because Batman's interests are in the same interests as Lex Luthor. The only difference is that Lex Luthor wants to kill Superman. Batman probably just wants a way to neutralize him, uh, if possible. Um, so, Batman goes to Lex Luthor. Um, much to everybody's surprise at a certain point in the movie, uh, Lex Luthor releases Metallo, right, into the world to just do destruction. Um, and this is a way that you can have a Lex story and still have Superman fist fight somebody, um, which is something that, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see another Superman movie again where Superman doesn't fist fight somebody. Um, now, obviously, he can't just, you know, punch Lex Luthor's head off. Um... So you need some other secondary villain, and that's got to be Metallo. It's the, it's the only thing that makes sense. Um, so Superman's fighting Metallo. He gets his ass handed to him because Metallo is powered by kryptonite, and he fucks Superman up, and this happens sort of all the time in the comic books. Um, meanwhile, at some point in the second act of the film, there should probably be a scene where Batman and Superman are talking to each other, and, and Batman comes to the conclusion that Superman's a good guy, um, 
and when Lex releases Metallo, Batman shows up, he says, I have the specs for Metallo because I've been working with Luthor on how to do this, um, and so therefore I can come in and I know exactly what to do. I have the plan for how to destroy Metallo, for how to defeat Metallo. I can swoop in and save Superman's ass uh, at the end of the movie. Meanwhile, of course, um, none of the... Uh, you know, nothing officially can be tied back to Luthor when he does this. Uh, so keeping Luthor as, as a good public... Um, keeping good public image for Lex Luthor... Uh, by the end of the film, even though he's the villain, even though Superman knows he's the villain, um, and even though Lex knows Superman knows he's the villain. Um, but I feel like Lex is a much more, is a much scarier character um, in the comics just because his his um, public approval rating is so high. Um, so the idea would be Lex saying, yes, we, work, we were working on this thing, um, you know, Metallo, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, John something or other, uh, the character whose consciousness they would download into Metallo's brain, um, he went rogue and we couldn't control him, and, like, that would be the official story. Um, uh, so Lex comes out squeaky clean. Um, Metallo, you know, gets wrecked by, by Superman and Batman, and that's the end of the movie, and I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a world's finest movie, um, because because Batman is only there a little bit. But I feel like if you're going to have a Lex story in this world, Batman has to be there as the exact opposite counterweight as Lex. It just narratively makes sense to have them sort of balanced off each other. Um, uh and it only makes sense within that universe. Meanwhile, in this universe, I can probably see it as being the case that Batman is kind of just an urban legend. Um, he is not somebody who is known to the public, um, but he's running around fighting crime, taking out mob bosses and blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this, in some way, is Batman coming out into the world so that people know that know that so that people know that he exists, um, thus setting sort of the groundwork for uh, going forward with Batman movies. And I'd like to see this character treated in such a way that you never actually see like in the Christopher Nolan Batman films you get um, three characters really you get Bruce Wayne you get Bruce Wayne the Playboy and you get Batman. Um, I'd like to not see real Bruce Wayne in this movie. I'd like to just see Bruce Wayne the playboy schmoozing and, and being a billionaire in Metropolis, you know, attending fundraisers and stuff to help rebuild Metropolis. Um, I'd like, and I'd like to see Batman, uh, coming in and just, like, fucking shit up. Um, uh, I think that we've gotten a whole lot of Bruce Wayne's character and not nearly enough of, of, Batman, and I think making this a Superman movie allows us the narrative vantage point um, to see Batman as Batman. Um, because if you read the comics, you don't spend a lot of time with Bruce Wayne. You know, Batman's in the suit most of the time, um, and that's something that I missed from the Christopher Nolan films. Not to say that I didn't love them, but that's something that I missed about them. The other thing, too, is that this sets up Batman, like, Justice League Batman's role of, like, I am the guy, I'm the man with the plan. I am the guy who has the contingency plans. I am the guy who, even though I'm just a human being, uh, I'm the guy who bails Superman out, right? I'm, I'm the guy who's, who's such a badass that, like... No one can save Superman but me. Um, and that's that's kind of the movie that I'd like to see. I'd like to see the beginnings of the relationship between Batman and Superman and the beginnings of the relationship between Superman and Lex Luthor. Um, also, I'd like to see... Uh, you, I think a lot of people's issues with this movie come down to how they're treated in the sequel. 
So that mass destruction in Metropolis, I feel like, is a lot more offensive if they don't deal with it as a serious issue in the next movie, right? If they just gloss it over um, and pretend like it never happened, uh, then that mass amount of destruction is is obviously much more problematic than if within the film's logic it says, no, this was a really big problem, you know, people are divided about how to take Superman's existence, his very existence is is terrifying to people, I imagine. So this film has to be Superman coming and, and assuring the public of uh, that he's he's fighting for the right side. Um, so yeah, and I would like to see at this point like a more um, uh, wholesome character, right? So in Man of Steel, by the end of the film, I think you get a wholesome, upbeat uh, Superman character that we sort of it's something like the Superman that we all know and love. It it takes a while to get there, obviously. Now. In my mind, if you don't pick up from there, right, if you don't have that Superman character being Superman in that movie and saving people, etc., um, then, then it, doesn't, it doesn't work. But I do think the tone of Man of Steel, if it continues into Man of Steel 2, um, I think that it lends itself to a Superman-Batman movie. Again, I wouldn't call it a world's finest movie. I would say it is a Superman movie at its core. Batman just happens to be introduced in it um, and to play a certain narrative function and to, and to lay out the relationship between Batman and Superman going forward into a Justice League movie and reestablishing Batman's character in such a way that it makes sense for the Justice League. Um, because I don't think that Christopher Nolan's Batman is a Batman that makes sense in the Justice League. So yeah, those are my thoughts on a Man of Steel sequel. Um, comment, subscribe, like the video if you like it. Have a good day.